Forward Party's homepage is about as boilerplate as you can get without being filled with lorems and ipsums. Platitudes about bringing Americans together instead of dividing them, keeping America free, and building thriving communities. But in fairness, it's, it's just the homepage. You know, both the Democrats and the Republicans' websites have to be pretty similar, right? You know, creating diverse communities or protecting your community from other communities. Stuff like that. So let's dig a little deeper. In fact, you know what? Okay, when you click on Why Forward at the top of the page, you do get really specific insights, like the Forward Party will welcome new ideas and fearless conversations around the issues of the day, and the Forward Party will approach each other with grace and tolerance, finding ways to pick people back up rather than knock them down, and we're moving American politics forward with a party focused on innovative, collaborative, and common sense solutions that work for the majority. And the Forward Party will take you to the Horn Dungeon, an exclusive club only for the horniest dungeon masters. Want to see a naked cloud giant? Come to the Horn Dungeon. That's from a different browser tab. Okay, we're gonna keep looking. Platform, they got a platform button. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. Finally, the platform. Ranked choice voting, nonpartisan primaries, independent redistricting commissions, and that's it. Now, once again, those things are worth exploring. Ranked choice voting has various potentially positive and negative effects on governance and voter turnout, and independent redistricting commissions are necessary to prevent partisan gerrymandering in ways that disenfranchise voters, particularly voters of color. Of course, the Supreme Court is hearing a case that could eliminate the ability of state courts and independent commissions from throwing out racist gerrymandered maps, which would likely negate the federal law the forward party wants to establish to make such gerrymandering illegal. And wow, Supreme Court, way to rain on the forward party's parade. The one law this entire political party supports at the federal level, and you're about to make it impossible since you are, legally speaking, gaping dickholes. Dick holes so big, you could fit dicks in there. But Forward is not a nonprofit advocacy group for new election laws. It's a political party. They have a whole web page, after all. Presumably, they want people to join and donate to and campaign for and maybe even vote for this political party. As Jim Acosta said to Andrew Yang in that interview, you're going to have to have policy positions at some point, and that point, at the moment, appears to be far down the x-axis, maybe off the sheet of graph paper, perhaps even in someone else's geometry class. A horny cloud giant's geometry class in the horn dungeon? Who knows? Anything's possible in the sexy, sexy imagination. But amazingly, instead of rushing out policy positions to blunt this criticism, the forward party is doubling down on not having them. In a post on the party's blog called Open Letter to Forward Skeptics, Florida Forward Party leader Nate Smolensky suggests that skepticism is based entirely on the brokenness of the two-party system and not the party's lack of definition itself. Smolensky writes, quote, As to our philosophy and guiding principles, some may have been thrown off by the open-endedness of our messaging. Unlike most political parties, we're not interested in putting forward a top-down dogma of what we deem right on each and every issue. Instead, we believe in building a coalition of pragmatic, independent, innovative thinkers. And then what, Nate? What do the innovative thinkers think, Nate? Former Republican Congressman David Jolly, now one of the leaders of the Forward Party, addressed this as well at the party's kickoff event in Houston on September 24th. And before we get to the clip, let me tell you, this thing was a f***ing rager, by which I mean it seems like there were a lot of white guys named Ray there. Yeah, this is a very critical question, and that's what I referenced earlier. This is a different kind of party, and fundamentally what it does is it empowers candidates closest to their communities to articulate the majority position of their community. Imagine that. Why is it at the start of each cycle that today's Democratic Party writes off half of the country 
as being antithetical to their values, and Republicans write off the other half as being antithetical to their values. Republicans don't try to win anything in California, Democrats don't try to win anything in Alabama. It seems kind of silly. What if you built a party big enough, broad enough, to represent the entire country? To actually have forward party elected offices in Alabama and in California. Think about that, right? Wow, what, what an original idea to, to have candidates closest to their communities articulate an important position of their community. You know, like, like some kind of representative. Such a, a different and, and fresh concept as opposed to our current system of representational democracy. Listen, I get it. Our current system is extremely partisan and super not great. We talk about this all the time on the show. But he's literally just describing a democracy as if he just invented it. The thing our system is supposed to be and technically still is, politicians represent the states they are elected from to the point that they will go against their party or morality or dignity if they think it will help them get reelected. The Democrats went all out this year to support anti-abortion Democrat Henry Queller against a primary challenger in the red state of Texas. Joe Manchin's a Democrat and he won't do anything unless West Virginia's 10,000 or so coal miners are okay with it. Kirsten Cinema is a Democrat and actively thinks her own party should not be able to pass any legislation whatsoever. Remember when that GOP weirdo ate a burger in front of the US Capitol because they thought AOC was gonna outlaw meat or whatever? Well, that guy was representing Utah, which has an economy hinged on livestock. I get that it's frustrating when national progress is halted because one person is concerned about the industry in their state, or more likely being paid lots of money by that industry. There's absolutely a problem in this country with how unbalanced and corrupt our representation is and how partisan the entire process has become. It is a busted two-party system where both parties still manage to come together and agree that two things that still kick ass are capitalism and war. But the answer isn't to add a political party so generic that they stand for absolutely nothing in fear of angering a portion of Americans. Not to go all the dictionary on them, but the definition of a political party is a group of people with shared views about how power is to be exerted and to what ends. There's simply no getting around that. If your selling point is that you fundamentally believe in nothing, you're not a political party. You're the nihilist from the Big Lebowski. We will get to why the forward party refuses to have policy positions in a minute. But for now, after looking at their announcements, press materials, website, and public statements, the most you can say is that their pitch is, we are a third party. Nearly every article announcing the launch of the party uses the same quote, that it wants to give Americans more choices in elections, more confidence in a government that works, and more say in our future. Those second and third things are vague and don't mean anything. And the first is announcing that they are an additional choice with no selling point whatsoever. All while ignoring the fact that there are already other choices. It's like if you were tired of Coke and Pepsi and then some other company started advertising bubbly dark mess. Or if you opened a store, didn't sell anything, and all of your advertisements were about how we need more stores, donations accepted. There entire selling point is that they exist as a third option, as if that's new and exciting. The forward party is more of a, a vibe than a political movement. You can't describe it, bruh, it's like a feeling. They're the hip shortening of the word forward to FWD. You know, like the kinds of emails you delete. They're also this star triangle letter A thing, these tricolored arrows, these zigzagging paper airplanes, and this low production value ripoff of ASAP science. What is gerrymandering and why is it bad in 60 seconds? We all like to think that we choose our elected officials. In reality though, they choose us. Every 10 years when the census comes around, legislators in all 50 states redraw their district maps my God, pick a theme and design scheme already. I don't know what the common sense majority view is on the best graphic to convey the concept of forward, but I'm pretty sure it's not FWUD. 
And if the people in charge of this party can't agree on what color the arrows should be or which way they should be pointing, how are they going to agree on things like, I don't know, what to do about the imminent f***ing climate catastrophe? Or more specifically, what to do about anything specific? The only consistent idea is that most of their imagery is about three things. Three arrows, three points on a star. This graphic Yang tweeted showing that while partisans are two things, forwardists are three. As in third party. As in our only idea is to exist as a third option. Listen. If you're in the forward party and all you want is ranked choice voting and other electoral reforms, there are advocacy groups that have been fighting for those things for years. Maybe toss them a few bucks or volunteer, you know, get involved in your community. Or, and this is a wacky idea, join one of the political parties that also wants those things. The Green Party supports ranked choice voting as well as a bunch of other common sense things. Not saying everyone should vote for them, green is objectively the color of boogers, but that party does exist. In fact, I hope it's been clear from watching this that I'm not criticizing third parties as a concept. Other political parties can and should present new ideas and alternatives to the existing two-party system. But in terms of why this party will be the one to break through where others have failed, I just don't see a compelling argument. If the forward party has other tangible political positions and actual changes they want to make to American society, people have to know what they are. And if those positions really are the common sense consensus majority view, great. Then post on your website that you want legal access to abortion, background checks on all gun purchases, public health care, free COVID tests and masks delivered to the home, and yes, even age limits for holding public office. But they're not advocating for those things. That's strange, isn't it? How so many consensus reforms are being ignored by them. Could it be that most of those things are things that one of the two major political parties already kind of much of the time is at least claiming to be in favor of? Hey, thanks for watching that clip. Here's the evergreen end plate to ask you to like and subscribe. It's any day of the year where you are.